All right, so the tail cloud here. Before I start erasing, what I could do is move it down below the other clouds, right? But to be really safe, and this is how I like to do it, so that I can play with the opacity of the other clouds, I'm still going to get rid of these hard edges first. So that means I use a soft-edged eraser, really large, about 500 pixels in diameter. It's pressure sensitive for size, right? Which is why using the tablet is so helpful. And it's at 100% opacity. So I can just hit these edges and cut it out. In a very controlled manner. Without having to rely on the computer. And I'm going to take away those, those darker blue pixels. Because it's pressure sensitive, I can just be really picky. And then I go to a lower opacity, around 30%. And I'll knock it back. Start transitioning it with the clouds below it. And in some ways, that's a better way to go than just moving the layer underneath. Right. So it's always better to, with internal textures, to build them up. But I can bring out some of that detail there, some of that complexity. All right, so I have the appearance of kind of a ridge tail. I can take off some of the edge somewhere with lower opacity, soft brushes, using my tablet, just little bites away. I keep a lot of that kind of bumpiness there. Another approach, if I need to soften this but I need the shape, is I could take this whole layer and duplicate it of the tail cloud. Move that layer behind and then filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Soften it and expand it out. So you'll see what happens behind now. Softens it up. If I'm going to do that, I might as well overdo it. So it's like using a texture fill, right? You can really soften it up. That's a little too much. All right, because clouds will have some parts that are sharp, some parts that are softer, right? But it will never have parts that are this sharp, <laughs> like my background cutout. So I still need to layer things and make those work. All right, we're getting there, though. The next cloud, let's see. Let's move it on top of everything so I can see it clearly. Ah, so this is kind of fragmented clouds. So let me show you, this is going to be good for the foot, especially right here. So what I'm going to do is take a big chunk of it, a lot of overlap, duplicate it out, then just delete that smart layer, which is taking up a lot of memory. Use the magic wand. I need to be in the right layer. I'm going to turn contiguous off here because this blue is so different than everything else. I'm going to try to even expand it by clicking on another blue somewhere. There we go. And now I'm going to do the refine edge, select and mask. I know all my settings are right, so I'm just going to say OK, not wait for it. I can zoom in and see, and then just hit delete a few times, really soften it out. Maybe about there. Then 
Command V. Now use that 100% soft edged large eraser. Get rid of my little rim here. Get rid of those hard edges. And I want this for that front claw. So now start erasing. But maybe before I do too much of that, go to my adjustments and how do I get rid of this really dark sky behind? I'm going to try levels first and I'm going to try brightening the midtones. You see? Then I might try. Yeah, that helps a whole lot. Then I might try hue saturation and just taking the overall lightness down a little bit. And now I can start blending in. I'm going to switch not to 30, but about 60%. Take a lot of this back. But around the, the leg, I want to keep some of it. And even these little blobs here that are going to stretch out, those might be helpful. So we just want to suggest the creature. Right, now I'm going to shift it down to about 30 or 20, take it down even more. Widen it out. See, treating those edges. Now, did it get every edge? No. But it's going to show me how to treat those super sharp edges that still remain to make them believable. Big difference. Now I could move this behind the others. See how that works. I like it on top of this at least. Gives that a little bit more complexity. Next cloud. So all of this is still just repeating what we've done. Now this is too blue. It can work for the head. But I'm going to have to definitely work with the color balance and the saturation of it. So again, take a little too much, duplicate it, turn off or um, get rid of the smart layer. Select all the blues around. But I still have contiguous on because I don't want to get the blues accidentally that are inside it. Then do select and mask to soften that. This is all edge control. Okay. It softens my selection, it also smooths it out. Hit delete a few times. It does a lot of my work for me. If I feather it more than that, then it will just be this kind of amorphous shape. So I still want a kind of bumpiness. But now I go in with my 100% eraser. Take a, oh, maybe I can use some of that on the foot. Nah. Okay, now before I use this, I need to make the color right. So image adjustment, color balance, move it away from cyan, a little bit more towards red, the shadows especially. But really it just needs to be desaturated. The highlights maybe a little bit more towards yellow, red. Yeah, but ultimately I have to go to image adjustment, hue saturation, take the overall saturation and intensity of color down. You see how that matches a lot better. All right. Now this has some nice highlights on the top. So that's why I want to use it to overlap with the head. It's got a nice kind of natural seam in it. You know, it kind of looks like a mouth. I might, I might even decide to extend my canvas a little bit over to the left to trail a little bit more of that cloud. 
And then I can just take my sky layer. This is one of the reasons why we paint our sky and transform it and extend it beyond. Now let's mess with that head. Hundred percent eraser, just take down the sharpest edges where you need to. I don't need to in too many places. Now I can go to a lower opacity eraser. Ah, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Go to about sixty percent, take down some of these outer lying ones. Now I'll go to about 30%. Blend in the others. Suggesting the shape of your original cutout, but not being a slave to it. This helps us appreciate the beauty of clouds. And gives you good practice with the tablet, kind of swirling and softening. Trying to have it look organic. And if at any time you go too far, just using Command Z or your history to go back steps. Now, just like a texture fill, if at any time you want to get some back, what can you do? Well, you can duplicate and you can move. You can use these textures, these brush strokes over and over. You can flip them. No, so I might use this on part of the back. And you can stretch it, you can warp it. We have so much control, it's a beautiful thing. But you always want to be working with soft edges. Otherwise you're in trouble. while preserving the ones that are most interesting. Okay, so I've, I've done at least five. That cloud's very yellow and blasted out. This cloud's pretty cool, maybe I wanna use a little bit of this because it's a very different kind of texture. So that will be it. And you see the wispiness around it. That's kind of a good reference for some of this stuff. Last time, use the magic wand, select a lot of that, refine it, say OK, delete multiple times from it, Yeah. So you go back to my select, select and mask. Say okay. There we go. Now delete multiple times from it to soften it. D, uh, Command D to deselect. And now where would this be most useful? Maybe on the back. That's kind of where the focal point is of my creature. Feel free to make things larger to kind of stretch them. But that's where the bulk of the cloud is. I'm going to use my, well, first let's take the saturation down a little bit. Get rid of some of that blue. Very good. Now, 70% opacity. Knock back some of those edges even more. And these transitions really knock back. 